Hi, I'm Miaren, and today we're gonna talk about Batman. I was gonna do this as like a top five, but I really wanna go into detail on more than five, so this is kinda just an overall Batman soft top five kind of thing. <laughs> but before we get into it, let's do the disclaimer. If you haven't noticed by now, I talk really, really, really fast, especially when I'm passionate about something like I am about movies and comic books and the combination. So it, it's gonna get a bit crazy. And if you can't keep up, that's okay, totally fine. There are so many amazing movie review channels out there, and I highly encourage you to find another one. But if you're good with it, then let's get into it. Going in order, let's start with the uh, classic Adam West Batman. Not too much to say on this, because it's not great. It's not great. But I used to watch these. My mom loved them, so I used to watch them as a kid, and just in the background. And still to this day, if they come on, I will sit there and watch them for hours. Just because you can't look away. <laughs> they're funny. They're, they're weird. <laughs> But they're, they're classic, they're iconic. And actually I learned recently they were made more as a parody of the Batman comics, kind of getting away from his dark seriousness. But they're, they're funny, they're very funny. They're weird, they're weird, especially watching them, like looking back now watching them. I'm not sure why my mom let children watch this, it's really weird. <laughs> but not as weird as the next era we're gonna jump into. Again, I'm doing this pretty quickly on some of these. But the Michael Keaton Batmans. I hadn't seen these before until a couple weeks ago my dad showed us because he absolutely loves Michael Keaton's Batman. So we were watching them. The first one, just Batman, was... I really liked it! Um, it's definitely a different tone than some of the later ones, like even though it's still dark, but the Tim Burton spin on it is fantastic in a fun, whimsical... not even whimsical, yeah, whimsical. All still weird, very bean burrito late at night nightmare kind of weird, but... <laughs> The sets, the props, the, the way they made Gotham City look so different. It's supposed to look almost otherworldly, like a, a non-existent city, but it's incredible. Again, the sets, the props, the costumes, I loved all the, the um, how the cops all had like the dark leather, almost very Nazi uniform looking outfits. It was brilliant. The messaging, the humor, Jack Nicholson's Joker. Oh, so funny. I'm not sure about Keaton as Batman. Like he's, he's funny, but he's so, not the typical later Batmans that we're used to. That I liked him, but he doesn't really stand out in my head because he's not the typical Batman and he's not the typical Bruce Wayne. But I liked, I really liked that first one. I thought it was good. The second one with, um, what's his name, Danny DeVito? I didn't, mm, and Michelle Pfeiffer, and we were all, I just, I think it broke me. It was so weird, it broke me. <laughs> and I can handle some weird stuff, but no, mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. I will never see Danny DeVito the same ever again. And I don't even know if this was a Batman movie because he was barely in it. It was mostly just the little strange fat penguin being really fucking weird. But <laughs> it was experience. I now understand it. Jumping over to Batman Forever, which switched uh, Batmans to Val Kilmer. These ones are interesting. They're a little bit different. So they're still Tim Burton, but they have their own vibe. Like it has its own sort of Val Kilmer one-off era vibe, which I like. It's still got a lot of the creativity from the first Tim Burton one with some of the weird of the second one, but not as far. They're still weird. I don't I don't know what it is. And I don't watch a lot of Tim Burton. He's just not really my pace. I respect him as it, like creatively wise, but it's just not really my thing. I don't understand why all of his female characters in the Batmans are these ravenous, bad shit, crazy psycho sluts. I don't understand. It's just, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't wanna get it. it's just, I, why? Why? Just chill out, ladies. It's fine. You can, you see everything. You don't need to rip his clothes off. You can already see everything through the suit. No secrets. And in all of the Tim Burton's, and actually now I think about it. Okay, well in all the Tim Burton's, Batman always reveals himself, his identity of Bruce Wayne, to the, the female. Um, but actually I was just thinking about it. All of the Batmans reveal their identity in one another, except for Robert Pattinson's, but his still gets found out by Riddler. But Anyways, weird thing for superhero, they always tell the chicks, and they're always different chicks, even when both Keatons had different women, and he told both of them. I just... And they're all crazy! <laughs> a little irritating, a little irritating, but um, the, I like this one, it's fun, it's crazy. I like Bill Kilmer in general as an actor, I think he's great. This one, I don't know. I don't... It, like, he, he's capable of very personality, individual type characters. I'm not sure why this character has about as much personality as a really pretty mannequin. It, there's just not a whole lot to work with there. But 
uh, characters like Jim Carrey's Riddler and Tommy Lee Jones's Harvey Dent slash Two Face definitely make up for it because uh, wow, holy cow! <laughs> like Jim Carrey, all of his characters, he always gives 110 percent, absolutely 100 percent true here. It's weird because he's he's younger here than in most of his main stuff, so it's kind of interesting to see him that way. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, wow, I hmm hmm, I, uh, <laughs> I think it was a very serious sort of grounded fatherly type character and this was something else i mean i guess it's probably fun to do something different but i don't i don't i don't know if i like it like i said nicole kidman eh, she, they, i i hate this trope but when they have the quote-unquote smart girl who is a doctor or whatever but she never says or does anything even remotely intelligent even when she's spouting quote-unquote techno babble smart psychology stuff it's like basic entry like the first class to intro psych type level stuff i'm not sure why they couldn't get a like an expert in to just feed her some lines nicole kidman's very talented i'm sure she can say the big words i don't know why they made the smart girl not smart and robin i hmm i like that he has a back like the skills backstory that he was this really talented uh, acrobat in order to do what he does as robin not sure why they made him such an irritating classic 90s little shit I don't, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> they get, they made Bruce, Bruce Wayne, very mature, controlled. He's not in any way sort of this embattled character like he is in the other rendition. But they made up for it by making Robin really irritating little brat. But other than that, um, it's enjoyable. It's crazy. It's still got the weird vibe. It's still got the gothic architecture and the world building. Except they have the Statue of Liberty, like it says Gotham on it, but I, the thing I liked about this one is that Gotham felt like a completely made up city. I'm not sure why they did that. Overall, it's fun. I still love the artistic ability. I still love Tim Burton's sets and angles and costumes. They're just, I mean, the whole time your brain's just like, I don't even know how to compute what is happening. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and the last thing I'll put on this one, uh, Valkymer's voice. Which he has a phenomenal voice in general. That's so sad that that's the thing that he lost. But for some reason, his Batman, well, not for some reason, obviously, it's his voice. But the Batman voice in this sounds like the voice he did for God in Prince of Egypt. So whenever he's like scolding Robin or doing anything, that's all I can hear. And it gives it a level of grandeur to it, but it's definitely a weird, <laughs> a weird element. Um, oh, wait, crap. I think I just. I think I said that uh, Tim Burton directed this one. He didn't. He produced on it and was involved in production. That's why it has a lot of his trademarks. But it was actually directed by Joel uh, Schumacher. So, sorry about that. Forgive me about that. It does have uh, Tim Burton's trademarks because he was involved in production. And at that point, Joel Schumacher was trying to do homage to Tim Burton's vision for the third one, but it wasn't directed by him. And then Joel Schumacher directed this next one with George Clooney's Batman. So let's talk about that one. It has a similar vibe to the last one, kind of like with last one where it turned down the unhinged Tim Burton-ness but turned up the, the cheese factor. This one, there's not as much, like almost none of the unhingedness, just a lot of, a lot of cringe. Not so much cringe, it's just, it's pretty cheesy, it's pretty cheesy. It's just really the big actors that carry it. You know, George Clooney gives a great performance, uh, Uma Thurman gives a great performance, Arnold Schwarzenegger is hilarious. They carry it and make it somewhat watchable. I gotta be honest, this is not my favorite. I do like parts of it. I think it's entertaining. I like some of the sets. It's fun. Um, and you can tell Arnold Schwarzenegger had a ball making this movie. However, it, it's a bit too cringe and the Robin and Batgirl thing, they are so, so unwatchably cringe in this and the whole kid power thing. And I'm pretty sure Alicia Silverstone's character as Batgirl in this one is the actual definition of insufferable because oh my god i can't i can't i found myself fast forwarding through her bits whenever i do watch this because she's just so irritating oh my god but overall i like okay so george clooney his charisma has charisma he's you know when he talks you could be saying literally anything and he sounds brilliant he's just that's who he is however i honestly he doesn't feel like batman or bruce wayne he just that's he doesn't fit either of them so it feels like I don't, I don't know it doesn't feel like a batman movie even though it has batman characters just because george clooney isn't batman and again kind of the similar trope of this just sort of 
pretty girl but has glasses on and she's a hideous and no one gives her the time of day and then she dies and suddenly comes back as this ravenous horny crazy lady i don't i just i need an explanation why what why would i just mm. and bane ah, hmm. tom hardy definitely definitely uh elevated that one a bit <laughs> but it's 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 entertaining. It is entertaining. Then Arnold Schwarzenegger. Again, it seemed like he had so much fun with this. I could just kind of imagine him when they're like giving him the props and costumes, just absolutely loving every second of it. But there's this thing when it's kind of weird when um, big action heroes, like main hero types, play bad guys, and it just doesn't work. Some of them can't. Some actors, like um, Kenneth Branagh, can convincingly play a good guy and a bad guy, and they're both convincing. Then there's other ones like, oh, what did I just see this? Like, um, I went and saw that uh, Journey to Bethlehem. It's like a Christmas musical thing, but Antonio Banderas plays Herod, King Herod. And it's interesting because he plays scary, like scary evil well, but at the same time, he's so charming and has this incredible screen presence that you still love him. You still come away with it, absolutely like adoring him, even when he's super evil, but he does evil well. Then there's sort of this Arnold Schwarzenegger type. He's not even remotely believable as a bad guy. He's just too adorable and happy and you just, no, he's just, <laughs> it's funny. It's entertaining. You want, you're rooting for him the whole time. But, you know, overall, I don't hate this movie. It's just the, the whole tween teen thing is too much. It's too much. It could have been decent if it wasn't for that. Now we can start getting a little more in depth because we're at the Dark Knight trilogy with Christian Bale. Love these movies. They are so classic, so well done. I love Christopher Nolan as a director and Christian Bale's an incredible actor and you have so many incredible actors. Let's just run through in general. You got Heath Ledger, Gary Oldman, Michael Caine, Anne Hathaway, Killian Murphy, Liam Nielsen, uh, Morgan Freeman, Aaron Eckert, uh, who else do we have here? Joey King, Ken Watanabe, Vern Gorman, I mean, so many, so many incredible ones. Um, Colin McFarlane, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, even Josh Brolin and Glenn Powell have small roles in this. Like, a stacked cast. They have so much talent, so much material work with the writers, the directors, the everything came together really, really good in these movies. Which is crazy, because they were kind of before superheroes were really big. Like, this was one of the bigger upticks of the genre before Marvel got its feet in. I think... Iron Man happened kind of around the same time as The Dark Knight, but really Batman Begins started the superheroes are cool type thing. And absolutely, completely understandable. Even if you watch now, it completely holds up. And even more so, especially with where we're at right now with superhero movies, especially Marvel movies, or DC, I mean, really just movies in general. But the writing, if you haven't rewatched it recently, rewatch Batman Begins. The, the character building, the setup and payoff, the just the or this is a masterclass in origin stories you i don't even know how to put into words with it just so so much especially i loved watching the scene where he's training with raz al ghul and all of the armor that they have him training in is what like elements that are then built into his bat suit like it explains why the bat suit you know in the earlier renditions and even later he's sort of just that's what batman looks like that's why he's dressed like that but this one really explains why you know why would have been atlante choose to encumber himself with a rather un unflexible bulky suit and it's because all the elements of it are useful like the bat ears conceal his uh, audio equipment and the spikes on his arms that would be really problematic to walk through doors and stuff are for the fighting the, the fighting techniques that he learned with Ra's al Ghul the cape for flight and all this stuff like it explains it not to mention that but also has um, Morgan Freeman's character is kind of like his cue that is explained. It's not just that he's a rich guy, so therefore he has technology. His dad's company had this R&D department where Morgan Freeman's character works and invented all of this stuff. Maybe not him specifically, but all these inventions, inventions come from there and Bruce has access to it because the bigger companies overlook that department. Makes sense. There's an explanation for every little thing about it. And this carries over to the Batcave as well, where it's this old kind of underground smuggler's area or for repairs or whatever underneath his house. So it's not like in the Keaton Batmans where he has this really cool Batcave, but it's, I mean, it's insane. He's got these tiny little bridges that I would absolutely fall off of and he's got vaults inside of the rocks and it's really cool, but it's also just like, you have no idea 
how or why, <laughs> you know, he has dozens of bat suits. Whereas Christian Bale's the first that it was like, he made everything. He sorted out, figured it out, figured out how to hide the expenses so no one knew what he was doing, hiding it down here in this cave that already existed. And he had to face his fears to discover this cave that had the sort of smuggler's elevator to the house all makes sense. And it fits and the bats in there and it looks rough. Like he sort of just put stuff down there. He didn't build the cave for himself. Love it. Um, what else with him? Oh, I really like, let me get this one with, Patents in a second, but I really like Christian Bale's um, Bruce Wayne the best of all of them. I like his Bruce Wayne. I think he's got that swagger. He's got the attitude about it, even though he's kind of irritated when he's playing his younger self. Got not gonna lie, it's just it, something about it's really weird to me. But overall, his Bruce Wayne feels right. Very Tony Stark in a sense, but also the the contrast of him and the Batman. Personally, his Batman to me, even though it's still really cool, I think it's a a little less natural feeling than Pattinson's Batman. But I'll get to that in a second. But that's the only thing, only down, only down are this when he's like talking and his mask like kind of smooshes his mouth a little bit. And it, it's a little distracting for me. But the villains, let's talk about the villains because that's one of the best parts of this trilogy. The first one you got, um, kind of a couple in there, but I really like Scarecrow. Scarecrow's kind of the main one that people remember and Ra's al Ghul, but I like Star Scarecrow's the concept there. I think it'd be interesting if they did a little more with that. I'm pretty sure the comic books do, but the mad doctor experimenting on the mental patients and stuff like that. It's, it's interesting, it's scary, and I really like Killian Murphy. So seeing him in this role is is interesting. It's an interesting dynamic to see him playing this kind of, not dumb bad guy, but it's not, because he plays bad guys, you know, like uh, Pinky Blinders and stuff, but it's very different. There's no confidence there that he can play almost this like snaky, radish type bad guy. It's interesting. It's a good, good role for him. Similar, Vain running through all the bad guys where they take actors that you would never have thought in those roles, like the absolutely iconic Heath Ledger's Joker. And, oh, that one, it still shocks you much. I love Heath Ledger's stuff. But the way he got in his character was so different from anything he's ever done, any characters that he played, not being a heartthrob in any way. It, it, incredible, incredible. I mean, anyone who's seen it knows. He's fantastic in this role. It's so sad that his career got cut short before he could expand more into this area. Breaking out of that sort of tween romance movie comedy kind of stuff into a very serious acting level. At this this level, I don't know if he had this the entire time and that he just, no one cast him in these roles, but we got a beautiful cinematic gift from Nolan with this one. And then you also have like Tom Hardy, who he, he can play good guys and bad guys, and he does both very, very well. But his Bane, I love his Bane. And really look at that, because a lot of actors, especially now, refuse to do mass roles and stuff, because they want they want people to recognize their face and stuff. And I really like that Tom Hardy is still, I guess, humble enough to be okay with the art coming before his own career. And I really like that. Last couple of little things I want to point out with the Dark Knight trilogy is the music. Hans Zimmer took it to a whole new level whole new level that, yeah, oh, I don't know what we're gonna do when Hans Zimmer's gone. I hope he's training up some apprentices or something because you, you don't even need the movie. You can just listen to soundtracks that he does and you have all the entertainment you need. It's like, he is incredible, incredible. And it just gives this depth to the to these movies that you was never there with the earlier ones. Um, I also wanna point out the like vehicles and stuff went from being very flash, very crazy and peacocky to practical, even though they're still badass and really cool. They're more tactical, functional, like it's meaty in a sense. They're not so much dessert, they're meat. And I really like it. I love vehicles. I love cars. I love the sound of good engines. Mm, mm, this, this, this does it right. <laughs> then I know I'm trying to keep it brief. I'm I, there's so much more I could talk about, but I'm going to roll into the patents in Batman. And these are the freshest on my mind because I just watched these. I actually watched them because so earlier today, today is the day that the uh, 60th Doctor Who special launched and I watched it and I was so, I had high hopes. I did. And I, they were dashed very quickly. What the fuck? You had one job to do. You, I just, how can you possibly screw up this bad? I, I have no words. I'm fuming. <laughs> so to calm down, I watched the Batman because I remember they really liked it. And I'd been thinking about Batman because I was watching it with my parents the other day. So I decided to watch that to remind myself that good movies exist. And oh, maybe it's just also in contrast. Like it is in genuine a good movie, but in contrast to that episode of Doctor Who, 
it's mind like this movie is beautiful and beautiful 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 and now that uh was last week or whatever that i watched the keaton batmans the a lot of elements were taken from that and i really like it. they took a lot of the good stuff they took the uh, some of the copy uniforms they don't look as nazi anymore with those like the leather copy uniforms the city even though it's not as otherworldly as the keaton ones it's still different you can tell where they filmed almost probably in different countries getting a lots of gothic architecture and then pretending it was all in one city really like that and as i mentioned just a minute ago i really like pattinson's batman i, I he's bruce, i like his bruce wayne he's a little on the dark side it's different i'm not saying i don't like it i kind of prefer uh christian bale's bruce wayne but i really like pattinson's batman the suit the way he talks the way his bone structure and his face fit into the mask is much more badass than bale's i really like i like the movements i like the soundtrack i love how everything in this movie sounds really heavy like the bullet sound like more like 50 calibers than normal handguns the walking sounds heavy the cars feel heavy and sound heavy and intense everything in this movie it feels intense very film noir but in a it's almost like an exaggerated sense like everything feels heavy and everything the the light dark contrast even the music of ave maria on the mercy scenes and not in a blasphemous way because I, I i do watch that kind of stuff but just this sort of the, the grace and beauty, the goodness of the world, and the darkness at the same time, where you have bright lights and dark lights. The whole thing, very, as I said, film noir. Oh, mm. <laughs> it's like watching a Caravaggio painting as a movie with more of an orange tone to it. But it, I really love that. I love the cinematography in general, the way they set up the angles, a lot of the treatments they did afterwards, the film flares and lighting and stuff like that makes it its own world that you can get absorbed into. It doesn't feel like you're looking at New York. It feels different. I really like that his Batcave is in an old subway station underneath Wayne Tower. And again, kind of like with the Christian Bales, where it feels very organic. It feels like this kind of lost young man trying to make it work. He's just, it's not decorated. It's not, there's no feminine presence here, right? He's just got a bunch of dirt and dust and broken building rubble with his computer monitors and everything set up on tables and stuff. It's not designed, it's not like the a layer really like it was kind of with Adam West and stuff like that or even the Michael Keaton's it's this sort of troubled young guy using what he has to make it work and everything's just sort of what works it's not there to look pretty it's not there to look cool but it does just because that's what the aesthetic look like <laughs> I love it it shows him working on the car and stuff like that so I kind of wonder when especially like Christian Bales and stuff like that their cars get destroyed or whatnot is it Alfred is it you know who's who's helping here this one, it really shows that while Alfred is more of an active, like, eth athletic -y presence in his life and is capable of helping him and teaching him, but Bruce himself is the one tinkering with things, making things, doing things, and it doesn't explain as much as Batman Begins does of the origin of all this stuff, but at this point, just with all most superheroes, we, we know their origins a million times over, and you don't really want to waste a movie on another origin story of the same hero we've seen 50 times. So I'm good with this one not explaining it, Probably because I still, in my head, kind of see the the Christian Bale origin for Robert Pattinson's. Though, obviously, it's different because he's much younger. He doesn't have all the, the training and influence of that. We don't know that there's a lot of that ghoul interference. But, going out there. Anyways, it works. <laughs> While we're talking about Alfred's, I also do kind of want to compare. Michael Caine's Alfred is classic. Iconic. You know, that's who, when I think of Alfred, I think of Alfred. But I do actually really like Andy Serkis' Alfred. I like that he is more fit. I don't mean I don't mean to like focus on his physique, but the fact that he's capable of doing things, even though he walks with a limp, like obviously he's had a life and something's happened, but that he can be there for Bruce. You almost feel like he's Bruce's backup, more like a bodyguard slash butler than just kind of his old granddad butler type character. And I really like that. I also like how they showed their relationship develop. Well, they do the same thing with Christian Bales, where he slowly kind of, for, like he's a moody teenager and then he forgives Alfred. The Robert Pattinson one shows a lot more of the emotional damage that the character went over. Maybe just because Robert Pattinson is very good at expressing emotional anguish. <laughs> and in general with Batman, overall, his work character development comes out of a place of self-pity, self-anguish. Oh, woe is me. Why did, why did this happen to me? Therefore, I'm going to get revenge and I'm going to try to stop all the bad in the world because of this thing that happened to me. But he's very self-pitying. His whole character and his motivation for fighting back is almost getting revenge because he couldn't protect his parents when he was younger and it is awful and it's very sad i'm not saying that's not a just cause but i think it's interesting whenever he talks like interacts with say catwoman especially in the robert pattinson one 
where she experiences real trauma from a horrible upbringing with, you know, a prostitute mom and the abusive dad or the bad dad and just, you know, everything. She knows what it really, what evil really does to a person living their life. He had one bad event. And I'm not saying that's like not a good motivation. It is an interesting motivation, but it's a very interesting just character study of this rich guy that had one bad thing happen to him as a kid and he could have easily just moved on, used his money, lived his life, and been a little playboy. But he chose to fight crime. So it is a good thing. He is using it in a good way, but he's so obsessed over his emotional trauma and won't let anyone in and is always very woe is me, pitying me, not really understanding that everybody else has trauma too. That it's usually a lot worse than his. But it's interesting. It'll be interesting. I'm excited to see the next The Batman. I don't know what they call it, but I think it's coming out in 2025. Because at the end of the Batman, he kind of almost has like a realization of that. It was like, okay, this isn't working. Me going out for revenge and destroying everything. I know that's also a running theme with Batman, but he it really seemed to be like a character shift at the end. We'll see if they carry that through. But not gonna come on that until until we see the new movie. Oh, what else to talk about this one? Um, let's just go over the, their cast real quick. Again, Robert Pattinson, uh, Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano as the Riddler. He just in general, this, he's such a good actor. He's such a He's, mm, I don't know, he's creepy, but in a really talented way. And the focus, he has very good screen presence. When he's talking, you can't look at anything else but him. You just focus on whatever he's saying. Brilliant. Uh, Colin Farrell did good. Usually I'm not a fan of taking skinny guys and putting them in fat suits because it just looks so cheesy. But he did good. He's so funny. So funny is the uh, penguin. And you can tell he had fun with the role. And I always like seeing that. Uh, Andy Serks, again, fantastic. Uh, John Toretto, Tur bleh, Tur Tur Toro. Anyways, the guy who plays Carmen Falcone. I always see him from um, Transformers, and he'll never not be that guy. So even when he's talking of this, I still see him as the crazy FBI guy. But <laughs> he did it good. He did good in this. I also thought it was funny. Most people probably won't know this, but Max and Charlie Carver played the twins, sort of the muscle enforcement twins. That oddly they bring a lot of attention to. But they hardly ever show them. They show them like twice, but they mention them like eight times. Like, oh, the twins, you met the twins. I see you met the twins. Tell the twins to do something. But the these actors also play uh, characters in Teen Wolf. They're like alphas in Teen Wolf, which is about werewolves. And Robert Pattinson was from Twilight playing vampires. So it's pretty funny that whenever he's fighting them, he's actually just like werewolves versus vampires. I know, totally random and girly, but I think it's funny. <laughs> last thing, last thing I want to mention here, because there's so much to talk about. And again, I just watched this. It's fresh in my mind. It's gorgeous. I just ordered the art book for this because it's, it's just really well done. I like the sets. I like the props. I like the lighting and the filmography. And it's very well done. But quickly, um, so the, the, the only little thing that I've heard controversy about this, I've heard generally people really like this. A lot of comic book uh, sort of purists really like this one, except for how Paul Daniels Riddler they made him essentially incels, his incel army, which during the time this movie was kind of being written, that was all of the news, right? With like this, the fear of the right wing incels that were going to be shooters and stuff like that, that got disproven pretty quickly that they're not actually, they're, they exist, but they're not that big or that powerful. And, but they, I'm not a fan of how they did that, though I do like the shift from most Batman villains and all the other iterations are these big, flamboyant, crazy, outlandish, absurd flashy craziness, right? I really like how this one had it be sort of a nobody or, or an anybody type villain. Like he was smart and he was intelligent and he was crazy and did all the riddles and everything, very intense riddles, but he, he could be anybody. I kind of, that's scary in its own sense. And I really like the change there. They didn't make him a Jim Carrey knockoff kind of thing, right? They gave him his own his own thing. And I like that. I'm slightly worried because at the end it teased the Joker and he seemed very tween and nonsense. And he felt like a kind of a discount tween TV show kind of Joker. Now, everything else is done very well. I'm sure they'll do a good job, but that worries me slightly. But other than those two little things, I highly recommend this one. If you haven't seen the Christian Bales, highly recommend those. And if you're just looking for some either nostalgia or some contrast or some just what the fuck is happening, Watch the early ones too, because they're funny. <laughs> they're really funny. Weird, but funny. I would not recommend, uh, what was that? Batman Returns, the Keaton one with kids. It's, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. but <laughs> the other ones are pretty safe in a weird, corny, crazy kind of way. So, oh shit, I totally forgot um, Batfleck, which he's fine. I'm not a big fan of the Justice Leagues personally, so I'm not gonna talk about him too much. Uh, he has some cool scenes, like the one where he's working out to beat Superman. I thought that was cool. 
But other than that, not too much to talk about. So, in conclusion, my favorite is Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne with Robert Pattinson's Batman. I got like kind of a, a mix of the two. But what are your guys' favorite and why and all that stuff? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you next time. Goodbye. Please consider like, sharing, and subscribing if you'd like to help support me and this fledgling channel to see where it goes. Thank you.